Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Pixar Fractal node and how you can use it to create noise. Um, the first thing that we want to understand here is what a fractal is. So essentially what a fractal is, is it's a pattern that is based on a shape. So you have a triangle and then to create a fractal out of it, you repeat that shape, I think generally getting bigger or smaller in some sort of like uh, concentric pattern or something else. And uh, a good way to sort of have a look at it, some examples would just be to type fractal into Google and then look at all the sort of stuff that you get. And um, you can see that, like for instance, um, this one here is the same shape repeated and then connected over and over and over. So, but um, also the larger shape, it's the same shape as the smaller shape in silhouette. The same with this triangle as well, for example. Um, it's the sort of art that people that listen to electronic dance music like. Um, or, if you're a fan of Tool, um, you could actually see it at the end of the video clip for Parabola. So this is actually kind of a good example because you can see the different la layers of the, um, of the fractal. So you've got the same shape and then it's got layers going backwards and backwards and backwards, which is similar to how the Pixar fractal um, actually creates noise as well. So let's put it into practice um, here in Maya and I've already got a light set up with a plane that's just the default size. So what I'm going to do is assign a Pixar surface shader to it and then I'm going to open up the half shade editor and we'll get our Pixar surface uh, node there. So I'm going to hit tab in the half shade editor and type in fractal and we'll get Pixar fractal. Hit enter and that will come into the scene. Uh, so if I select that and hit 3 to expand it, what I'm going to do here is run the result RGB into the diffuse color and this is just so I can show you what the pattern actually looks like as I adjust the attributes for it. So what I'll do is I'll render this um, top ca uh, view camera. Okay, so what you'll see here is that we've got a cloudy sort of pattern which is not really discernible as any sort of shapes that you can sort of perceive. Uh, and I've got the Pixar fractal attributes here on the left. So the first option we've got is surface position and this is basically important if you're going to be using the fractal to create displacements. So current position is just based on the geometry. The undisplaced position is what you'd want uh, if you want your displacements and your uh, pattern to match. Uh, so I'm just going to stick with current position for now. Next we've got the layers. So I talked to and uh, when I was talking about that tool video clip, I was saying how the fractal is built of different layers going backwards into the background to create a pattern. So with the layers on this, you'll see that you get a very simple um, with one layer or zero layers. I don't believe zero layers actually does anything. Um, with one layer, you get a very simple sort of looking sort of blurry effect there. And as we increase it, what's actually happening is it's putting the same pattern but sort of further away in the background behind the current pattern and blending them. So then you'll start to see as you increase the frequency of the layers, um, you'll see more of that layer repeated into the background. And also if I increase the frequency here to say 8, so basically that means that we're seeing uh, that noise more frequently um, spread throughout the the manifold in which we're to, we're viewing um, and then increase the layers sort of hard to see you can see it just on the dark areas that it's creating the same pattern but smaller and smaller again and smaller again behind um, behind sort of that that top layer that we're seeing most obviously there so I touched on frequency frequency is pretty straightforward it's just the frequency of the pattern um, you could sort of almost view it as zoom it's sort of like zooming in on the pattern or zooming out on the pattern and because I've only got the set to one layer, we're only seeing that one layer of the fractal. Uh, lacinarity basically means the distance between the uh, each successive layer of noise. So if I um, put three layers on this, and I'll just reduce that frequency so we can sort of see. So we've got this darker, more obvious one here. And as I increase the lacinarity, it sort of appears like it's zooming out. But you can still see this dark shape here is still pretty clear in the foreground. It's moving slightly and sort of becoming more blurred, but basically what's happening is that um, the smaller the number, the closer the layers will be together. And then the, the higher the number, the further the layers will be um, in depth from each other. So this darker layer here that we've got in the foreground is now being 
is now sort of in perspective looks further from this these smaller dots that you're sort of seeing so that's why they sort of appear to get larger and smaller dimension is sort of hard to explain without getting into the mathematics of it but essentially what it is is uh, it works in tandem with your frequency uh, and essentially what it controls in, in practice is as you increase it it'll sort of it sort of works like a clamp almost so as you increase it it looks more so the edges become a lot more refined and hard and as you decrease it it becomes a lot softer erosion works sort of as you'd expect it erodes in the positive it will erode for example these darker areas here you'll see them start to erode away and then when we get into like a negative value you'll see it happen to the lighter areas So now the lighter areas will be enveloped by darkness and you can sort of see the the rusting effect that if I had like a, a uh, red filter applied to this it would look a little bit like rust as you increased it. And the same in the other direction. And variation is essentially just going to give you a variation on the pattern. And uh, this is good if you're looking to sort of... Um, you can sort of animate this just by setting a key on that... Um, set key right click on the variation set key and then you can set a key on frame one and then a set a key on like frame 100 and you can key between them if you're wanting the the it to um animate at all um, or if you're not just not quite happy with the way that the pattern looks you can get a, a variation without sort of adjusting the values and finally we've got turbulent i really don't have a good description for this but this is what it does um, from what I can tell, it sort of works as a really hard clamp between the lacinarity, so it's sort of like the edges of where the um, pattern sort of are, the, the higher values of them. So if I work with the lacinarity, you'll see if I increase that, um, they'll sort of start to get closer together. Um, I actually use the, uh, the turbulent mode on the eye tutorial. If you haven't seen that already, check that one out um, to create sort of veins and as you can see it's because of the way that it's got this dark um, halo around the sort of darker line you can use it to make it look like veins quite easily um, and then yeah you can do some cool stuff with variation and you know create your own like electronic dance music video um, I'll keep turbulent on actually and um, I'll show you what uh, the manifold is so back in the hypershade editor if I just type in manifold and I'll get a pixar 2d manifold because I'm using a 2d I'm, I'm assigning this to two dimensions I want to use a 2d version um, so what I'm going to do is run the result into the manifold and so now I can scale the um, the pattern on the s or the t or both or or neither you can also change the angle spin it around or the offset if you wish which is just basically sort of imagining imagine if you like pan to the image long now I had some someone asking me how you sort of discern what everything does when you're working with these pattern nodes and it is difficult because there are a lot of different things you can use this for um, you'll notice that I've got a result F which basically means I've got a float output and I can use the float output to control a bunch of different things um, anything that has a float input um, which, which is basically a, a just a, a, a number input so something like a bump for example has a um, you can run the input uh, you can run the F into the input bump so now I can actually use this fractal to control the um, bump mapping on this tile so I'll run the result in into the bump normal and then I'll go to our 3D camera and I might just move that light to the right a little bit so we can see the bump. So now that um, now that pattern is actually controlling the bump map now that actually needs to be adjusted. Yeah, so yeah, you can see that now is controlling the bump map as well as being driven by the RGB. So just very simply like that, now we're looking at this and it almost looks like a topological surface of sort of a mountain range or something. Look at a little volcano there, I don't know. But you can see that using the fractal, you can create patterns very simply to 
sort of describe different types of surfaces and I use it in a lot of tutorials um, I already said that I use it in the eye tutorial I use it in the painted rust tutorial uh, I use it basically anytime I need a noise uh, input this and the Vora noise uh, node work well uh, depending on what you're after exactly they've each got different sort of uh, mathematical equations which are better for describing different types of shapes and things uh, I tend towards the fractal in most cases but the Voronoise can be quite useful as well so that's pretty much all there is to it uh, if you do have any questions about fractals or if you're trying to do something with one and you're wondering whether or not it is the way to go uh, ask in the comments and I'll try and help you out if I can um, or if you have any other general questions let me know otherwise if you like the tutorial make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on youtube and if you haven't already make sure you're just subscribed because i do a couple of tutorials normally uh, every week on software like Winderman and other 3d products if you'd like to stay up to date even further check out the facebook page link in the description that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering